Get ready to be taken on an unforgettable adventure through one of the most remote places on the planet. Second least densely populated country in the world only to Mongolia, this right here is Namibia. In this video, you'll get to see the top five best places to visit in Namibia based on my own experience. Now, before we start, let me share with you some information you don't want to miss. If you're just here in casual viewing and you would rather see short videos or beautiful pictures, you can follow me here directly on Instagram where I have this kind of format. Now, if you are in the middle of organizing your trip, better visit naspacker.com. In there, I spent so much time digging for you the information, the prices, the timings. You'll have articles each one for each specific region of the country, and you can go out there and really save time on, on organizing your trip. Now, if you are the kind who prefer to see things in video, make sure to subscribe to Naspacker channel here on YouTube. There are five episodes for Namibia that you can check, 10 to 15 minutes each, where you can see really how it is to travel out there. All right, so let's just start now with number five. The Maranen is a very beautiful region in Namibia. There's not a specific place per se to see in the Maranen, but it's more of the general area that really makes you feel as if you're completely lost in the world. Now, when you're out there, make sure to deflate your tires so you don't end up stranded on the road. But more importantly, make sure to take the time to stop and really just enjoy the amazing scenery that you have around you. It just feels like being on planet Earth even before human beings existed. Now, there are a few places where you can stop. You can stop at the Petrified Forest, you can stop at, at the UNESCO listed petroglyphs, but the real interesting part in there is to meet the Himba tribes. The Himbas are one of the major ethnies in Namibia, and the very cool thing is that you can go out there and visit one of their villages. We met this woman that took time to explain to us their century old tradition and how they're able to survive in this very harsh environment with the bare minimum. This was truly a humbling experience. Now, if you're lucky enough, you can get to meet the other tribes of Namibia, such as the Hereros, for instance. Number four, Etosha National Park. Etosha National Park is probably the best place to see animals in Namibia. Even before reaching the park, animals were just everywhere over there on the road. Now, compared to the very famous park of East Africa, such as the Serengeti or the Masai Mara, the cool thing about Etosha is that you can do it as a self-drive without a guide. It really bolsters this feeling of adventure. We saw some oryxes, we saw some zebras, we saw some small birds, some medium ones, and even some very big ones. We saw some rhinos, and even saw elephants. We got to see almost everything. But surely one of the best safari action I got to see in my life, alone, out there in the wild, is when this pack of female lions decided to ambush this poor zebra. This whole scene unfolded in front of us with absolutely no one around us. Really, I don't think I will ever forget this experience. Number three, Sosuzvlai. Sosuzvlai is probably the most famous place in Namibia. You all have seen the pictures all over the internet of the beautiful lunar or Mars landscape. But even before reaching there, it's absolutely important to enjoy the way. As everywhere else in Namibia, the roads are absolutely beautiful. Now there are two sections, before solitaire and after solitaire. Before solitaire are rocky landscapes with a lot of curves and even very beautiful valleys that you have out there. And after solitaire, the road gets better, but it's more flat, still with a very beautiful mountain behind you. Now in there, we got to explore this beautiful canyon that retains rainwater. We got to see beautiful sunsets over red dunes with oryxes everywhere, and even a beautiful sunrise with colors changing every second. In there, Dead Vlay is absolutely mental. It's one of these places that you don't even know how to qualify, that don't even make sense. It's this kind of landscape that you only see in space movies. Basically, this place is a mix between a desert and a dried up area, and in the middle of it, you have dead trees that petrified there for centuries. Now, one important thing is that you wanna go there before the sunrise, because you get to see how the light changes completely your perspective of the place, between having it under the shade and completely sunny.
Number two, Gabe Cross. Initially, we were told by several people not to go there because it's not really worth it or it smells too bad. But to be honest, we were on our way to Swakopmund and we were forced to stop because the night was starting to fall. But this turned out to be one of the craziest experiences in my life. Truly a once in a lifetime experience. Indeed, over there is an area protected for seals and is basically the largest seals colony in the world with up to 200,000 individuals all over the place. There's a small boardwalk for tourists, but they're basically everywhere. Their fur is everywhere. There's a long beach out there where you can walk for kilometers and it never stops. Truly for 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes, and you will still see seals everywhere. Again, that was a once in a lifetime crazy experience. And now, the moment that you have all been expecting. Drum roll, please. Number one. Uh, <laughs> I forgot what's number one. Sorry, one second, let me check. Yeah, Swakop Moon. <laughs> all right, why Swakop Moon? Well, Swakop Moon is the adrenaline capital in Namibia. You can do everything that you want out there. Swakop Moon itself as a city is very weird. It has this very German style in the middle of the African desert in the South Atlantic Ocean. But truly is what you can do in and around the city that makes it the best place in Namibia. You can skydive, you can go to a camel farm, you can do a tour to see the five smallest things in the desert. You can do boat tours to see some marine wildlife. One of the cool things you can do around Swakop Moon is you can head to Dune 7 to ride a quad bike in the middle of the desert. It was so nice. I can tell you, I've been to many deserts around the world and this was a very nice experience that you can do out there. The second cool thing we got to do over there is located an hour and a half away from Swakop Moon. We headed to the beautiful Spitzkoper. In there, the landscape is just mental. Spitzkoper is one of these places where you just want to go camp, feel like you're just alone in the world with this orangey red mountains that you can photograph, preferably during sunrise or sunset times during the golden hours. So you just go out there to camp and enjoy nature. And if you're lucky, you get to see a beautiful sky at night full of millions of stars. And one of the best other activities that we got to do around Swakop Moon is to go and visit Walvish Bay and Sandwich Harbor. Sandwich Harbor is probably one of the craziest places you've seen in your life. It's one of these places that are almost unique in the world where the desert dune directly jumps into the sea. If you don't know the place, there's so many cars that got stranded and lost in the ocean. So we really recommend you to get a guide. But the cool thing is that you'll be driving with the dune on your left side and the ocean waves on your right side so you really need to be a professional driver to do this. Cool thing for us, we got the best guide in the region, Romy, who drove us around the desert. We got this bunch of oryxes that just appeared out of nowhere as a cherry on top on our trip. And finally, like everywhere else in Namibia, the sunset is absolutely beautiful. The only difference here is that it's over a pink lagoon with flamingos everywhere. Now, before we close this video, there's a lot of places that I forgot, like maybe the Caprive region, Epupa, Fish River Canyon, Komaskop. That's why, please, please, if you have visited Namibia yourself or if you're a Namibian and you disagree with my ranking, you can leave your comment below with your own ranking so other fellow travelers can benefit from your experience. That's all from my side. Thank you very much and see you next time. Shoo.